Good afternoon. Here we are again with the uh, wellness gathering with our nice little groupie ladies. <laughs> and we're uh, uh, taking responsibility of our well-being through the core principles of the core alignment, focusing on the wonder of movement. Lynn, you can take it away. <laughs> the wonder, yes. Well, it's good to see you all. And today we're going to start with the question and we're going to say our name, say where we are. And what are your favorite types of shoes? <laughs> so I'm Lynn and I'm in Calgary and my favorite types of shoes are, well, I like a pair of shoes that I kind of can go in and out, you know, go from the inside to outside the house and Although I don't like to really wear my outdoor shoes in, in my house, but if I have to, I kind of like to be able to get my feet in quick is really what it comes down to. So I like a nice, nice slip on pair of sandals that are easy to put on so I can go from one space to the other. So how about you, Lorraine? I'm Lorraine. I'm in British Columbia. And my favorite type of shoes are the, probably to say the Birkenstock. They seem to be the the, the comfort of. But I do like to have a pair of tie up shoes that I uh, that I can put magnetic insoles in. <laughs> awesome. How about you, Olive? Uh, my name's Olive. I'm in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. My favorite shoes. Gosh, I'm not a shoe. Um, I'm not a shoe person. I have a sister who buys a pair of shoes I think every time she goes shopping but <laughs> yeah, probably my probably my running shoes so I have a good pair of sketchers right now that have good support in them anything with good support I guess that would be my answer <laughs> love it <laughs> Don Marie <laughs> I'm Don Marie and I'm from Sacramento and my favorite pair of shoes are they're like flip-flops but they're called oofles and they have a really spongy sole to them so that when I get up in the morning and I put my feet on the ground, there's some cushion in there. <laughs> so it helps me to get going in the morning. <laughs> cool. Very cool. How about you, Madeline? I'm Madeline. I'm in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, my favorite type of shoe um, I, I want to say Crocs at the moment, because like you, Lynn, <laughs> I can get in and out of them with ease. They also have uh, fuzzy lined ones that keep your feet warm in the winter and airy ones that keep your feet cool in the summer. So, you know, kind of they're a bit sloppy, but I like them for ease. Mm, cool. Gone are the days of high heels. That's well, right. Definitely. Yes, yeah. Definitely. I actually <laughs> never wore high heels. And and <laughs> yes. Well, it's good, you know, now that we've all stepped into the types of <laughs> shoes that we like and, and kind of looking at our, you know, the shoes that we wear. I mean, we do live in an environment that we, at least here, we have to have shoes, really. It'd be a little chilly to not wear shoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be um, gathering more information around, you know, what vision we want to have on, in front of us. And I don't know if you go back to our last module where we were speaking about our vision, our mission and our message, I believe. And mm -hmm. so we're going to um, continue in this regard and invite in the wisdom of Walt Disney. So I, I'm sure that everybody is familiar with Walt Disney. And uh, I know for myself, my memory of Disney was watching the wonderful world of Disney on Sunday nights mm -hmm. and uh, seeing different shows there. But if we wanted to see some of the, you know, Winnie the Pooh type shows, it was only once a month at the local school and uh, it, they weren't that available. But as I've learned more about Disney, I've never been to Disneyland or Disney World, but he want he had a a, a vision of really um, creating characters that would make people more happy. That was one of his missions. I think he wanted to see his family more happy, and and he wanted to be able to change people's moods 
and he was an artist. And I'm not sure what what do you guys know about Walt Disney? Mm -hmm. Maybe share something with me when you think of Walt Disney. What do you think of? Don Marie? Mm -hmm. Well, I have really fond memories of Walt Disney, especially, especially Disneyland. Um, I was very fortunate where my mother, uh, my mother's second husband had a sister who worked for some organization in, in Southern California. And every year they would have their, um, their employee appreciation party at Disneyland. And so she would share tickets with our family. And so as a child, we would go like every year to Disneyland. And uh, it, it's just such a magical place. And to see how he took his vision and just touched many people's lives from all over the world. The lines would be so long that people were trying to get in there and, and the kids would be excited. So it was a, definitely a magical experience and a magical place. That, mm -hmm. Those are my fond memories of it. Cool, awesome. How about you, Madeline? Um, I know through basically, you know, core alignment, more, I, more about Disney than I ever did previously. Um, and I know he was an innovator. He was he was really um, ahead of his time for the kind of artwork he did and what he wanted, how he wanted the artwork to uh, progress for him and make him money. Like he was, you know, he had the side of him that wanted it to be a financial success. And so I think in that way, he was not only looking to have people uh, be happy, but that it was a financial success, that it was, you know, his, uh, his making it work and making it work better than anybody else. And I think that's no, like a, a good model <laughs> for people, so. That's what I know about him. Got it. Got it. How about you, Olive? I think my knowledge of uh, the Walt Disney story too comes from core alignment. And I remember uh, being told how persistent he was. His ideas were not readily accepted at first and he just stuck to it. He said, this is how we're going to do it. And, and he did it. Cool. Lorraine? Sorry. Uh, I what I when I think of Walt Disney, I used to say it was magical. But I think all of his movies, there seemed to be a a, a meaning. There was a meaning to it. There was something that you could re take out as meaning, very meaningful. So he always had a meaningful message in that. Don't, I I don't know any examples particularly, but that I think there was a meaning for all his stories. Got it. Yeah. Totally. You know, when I first uh, dove into this work and had, was introduced to the concept of Disney, I didn't have a lot of experience with what he, who he was and what he did. All I just remember the little clips before Winnie the Pooh that my kids would watch and it would have him drawing, you know, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it's like, so. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be continuing looking at you know what's important to us about our health and our wellness as we're moving forward what vision and mission and messages that we have out and you know that we've been focusing on in our lives and we're going to step into the shoes of Walt Disney and invite him in and um, you know see you know what it might be like to step into his shoes so when you think about what you're focusing on in your life right now and you know what you might be creating or as the summer is coming and approaching you know what what is important to you from the perspective of mr disney mm -hmm. <laughs> you know if he was stepping into your his shoes and your shoes and you were with him what would he be um yeah what would he be looking at in your world <laughs> so I know for myself when I 
think of does I think of magical a magical mystery. You know, I, I think of creating um more gatherings and fun and, and just making, you know, having things be lighter and uh and um and creating something magical that I might not be able to imagine. What about you, Lorraine? Oh, you better have uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I think, I think just I I I have to think about that. Go to somebody else at the moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. All of what are you focusing on, and what what can you kind of? I think one of the things I said last week that I was uh, wanting to get outside and plant flowers and um, just make my space appealing. Um, mm -hmm. I've been to Disneyland a couple times. And in my mind, it is just a, a vibrant, colorful, um, larger than life experience. Um, so I'll follow that plan and, uh, and put lots of color in my, in my backyard this summer. <laughs> Don Marie? <laughs> well, I would have to say, when I think about Walt Disney, um, his his ability to see beyond his 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 world i mean he he had a vision that was just so phenomenal and it's still outliving him because of how impactful his vision was so i i think for me it would be uh, not being afraid to step out and doing something phenomenal even though i don't know that it's phenomenal but just stepping out and doing it and not being afraid and hopefully he would stand beside me and say go girl you could do this you're on the right path and um, you know guide me and mentor me to being a successful business person <laughs> yeah that's stepping out how about you madeline um i think what came up more than anything else in this whole envisioning him sort of standing beside is the decision like decide and and that propels and you know it's it's I know that showing up is a big part of but deciding to show up I think it's it's even more about the I don't know integrity of it and so he obviously had a lot of integrity behind his vision so I'm going to go with that decision, whatever, whatever that, whatever it is, that, that is the impetus behind. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So making a decision to show up. Mm -hmm. Okay. I come up with some idea. <laughs> to stretch the imagination and, you know, and, uh, make a decision and plan for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so stretching our imaginations, totally. That's kind of what I think, you know, what, what do you think is important? You know, what do you think would have been motivating him? And what do you think was important to him? Mm. Lorraine? I think he must have had a very strong inner desire to to be creative. I mean, I, I mean, just just from what he accomplished. But there must have been, and I don't know. I've never read a story about him or anything like that. But I think there must have been an innate excitement and pre, in, within him, probably as a very young person. I mean, I, I, it would be interesting to really delve into his real true story but I mean it's something that he was born with and uh, wasn't afraid to tackle it mm -hmm. yeah Olive I think he was a bit of a visionary he saw things that other people didn't see and he stuck to his uh, his beliefs and and his visions and he carried them through yeah how about you Don Marie I think he would probably be um, 
looking at his children and wanting to see how his children and his grandchildren, a legacy of what brings them joy and sharing it with the world and just being so creative in the sense that it not only would make the kids happy, but it would make the parents happy. And mm -hmm. so I would think it would be his wonderment for wanting to bring joy and peace into the mm -hmm. lives of people. Nice. Yeah, totally. Madeline? Um, yeah, the joy of the experience. I have been lucky to do the one in Florida a few times and, and it is, um, it's beyond what is normal existence. So it is like an escape thing. And I think him wanting to create an escape for people, um, it's just really interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure if he felt he needed to escape and that, Maybe. and that propelled him to do it. But I think that that is a big part of why it is so attractive, right? It's so out of the norm of everyday life. And, mm -hmm. and I think that, uh, that was a huge accomplishment, like just, just in it, in of itself. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, so how how might he have dealt with obstacles that he might have faced? What way do you think he dealt with obstacles that he might have faced? Don Marie? Maybe limiting beliefs. You know, not thinking that he could accomplish what he wanted to do. He probably had a vision, but you know, every time he probably took two steps forward, you know, something would happen maybe financially that would hold him back from really pursuing what, what he envisioned it to be. So I, I would say that the, the limiting beliefs and the obstacle that he may have had to encounter in creating that vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you, Madeline, what do you think? Um, kind of obstacles. Obstacles? Um... Well, the popularity of doing something that innovative, um, it probably wasn't a popular thing at the beginning. Like, I think he probably had lots of naysayers thinking he mm -hmm. was crazy for going ahead and trying to do this this thing that you would then say, well, why, why are you bending your back, you know, trying to do this? And you know there was probably lots of obstacles with it so it uh his fortitude to keep going and his vision so strong would have you know i'm sure been hard to say no to <laughs> eventually <Yeah. laughs> have you lorraine what you uh, yeah well i think well he was well when was he born he was early 1900s or you know, I, I met, and at that time, the movie industry was really booming in the United States. And with his imagination, and I guess he must have had an interest in drawing, or he wouldn't have been able to get all these little characters in. And uh, I think the the momentum of the the time that he was working must have had a big influence on him to with the the movie industry. And, and just creating animation and make it look real. I mean, that that's a, a you know, that was a new concept. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. it's not, not like a real person acting because you have to make all these little movements and then you flip the paper, you, you know, make a bunch of these things yeah, to make yeah. them move. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the totally. technology at the time must have been uh, a fascinating exciting time because look at the people that got into it and probably they probably had meetings and bounced their ideas off each other say so well let's do it this way and maybe you try it that way so I think just that being getting started at that time and in, in the century must have had a big influence on him as well mm -hmm. so what do you what do you think he believed to get him through the hard times Olive? 
I I've not read a whole lot about him, and this discussion makes me want to to delve into his story a little bit more. But the little bit I have read about him, he was just persistent. He was the kind of guy that mm -hmm. if you didn't like his idea the first time, he brought it around in a different way and presented it in a different light and can, tried to convince you again. Mm -hmm. I think he was just he was just persistent in, in mm -hmm. his vision. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Don Marie? What what do you think he used to get through the tough times? You know, I don't know. I just pulled him up on our friend Google. And he was <laughs> Sixty years old when he passed away. He was a young man and mm. um, born in nineteen oh one. But to be able to you know, stay steadfast to his vision. I mean, it's he's an animated film producer and entrepreneur. So to be able to bring those two components together, um, he, he really had to stay dedicated. He really had to um, not allow the naysayers to get him off track. Um, he knew what he wanted to do, obviously, in creating this magical experience for people, but to um, really have that perseverance to really want to push through and make it happen. And thank God his children, you know, and, you know, took a hold of what he created, his vision, his legacy, and took it to Florida and took it to a whole nother level. And I'm not sure if it's in another part of the world, but I to look they back on yeah. his legacy, it's it's got to be a phenomenal perseverance for him. Yeah. So let's just share what we are each personally, you know, share with us what you would like to create more of in your, your life. Lorraine? Uh, what I would more in my life share, um, well, I think just to it just uh, continue on with everything that's being presented to me and just uh, learning more about things and uh, keep an open mind to new adventures and uh, uh, not be not just sit and wait for the world to go by, but make the world go round <laughs> in my life, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> How about you, Olive? What's something oh. you want to create more of in your life? Well... Right now, I want to create the opportunity to learn more about Walt Disney. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to check out my local library and see what I can read about him. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, piqued my interest. Yeah. How are you, Don Marie? <laughs> wow. I'm just really inspired by this conversation and, and by Walt Disney. I mean, I never really thought much about him other than, you know, when you hear Disneyland or Disney World, you know, you know, it was created by someone, but to really stop and think about what it must have taken for him to create that legacy and to, for me, it inspires me that, you know, where I'm at at this point in my life is to, you know, remain healthy, keep my body and my mind sharp and clear. And, you know, he did not get to live beyond 60. And, you know, here I am, I've got a couple of years on him. So to be <laughs> to still have that, you know, get up and go and want to make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's such an inspiration to see what he did. And I'd like to have that same kind of inspiration. Mm, God. How about you, Madeline? Um, focusing on staying enthusiastic about change and movement and life um, and not get too stuck in the cement, you know? I don't want cement boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to be uh, light and airy and fairy and fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that's sort of similar to me. What I'd like to create more of in my life is more joy, more fun like this, having more conversations like this. Um, just spending time with people, having meaningful moments, you know, and, and having fun, you know. And I like that that sense of being able to um, float around more easily. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So what vision would you like to move towards in your life? Lorraine? What vision? Well, I, I'm looking forward um, to an exciting summer uh, with all the changes that are going around in my environment at the moment. And uh, just, just, just to listen to nature and uh, which just, calms you down and and put focus you're, you're grounded more and so I'm just looking forward to having a good summer and and creating some new activities and uh, share some uh, you know good times good mm -hmm. meals mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yeah totally <laughs> but you all I'm going to stick with that theme of color I want to make my uh my life more colorful too just bring more music and more books and flowers and just more colorful life. Mm, cool. Cool. <laughs> How about you, Don Marie? What I want to focus on is just being present, you know, waking up and being grateful that I woke up and <laughs> to be able to, you know, not, not take, what's happening in the world so seriously. I mean, I know that I need to be aware, but I just don't want it to be a burden on me. I want to be lighthearted. I want to not live in drama or a lot of confusion. I just want peace and <laughs> like the, the heightened orchestra, like right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like that a lot. I think that's great. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, having the intention to be open to what the what's in front of me and be open to change and be open to uh, receiving what is out there to uh, enhance my life. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it for sure. Yeah. Well, Disney, you know, held a very firm belief that created a lot of magic in his life and I believe it's still going on. So what, belief will you take away from today as we've stepped into Disney shoes that will support you until we talk again? Madeline? The belief that I will take away is uh, that I can, uh, I can be consciously light in my life, light in, in, in so far as light, the intensity of light, the lightness, the desire to have more uh, lightheartedness. So I will have that mm -hmm. belief. I'm hanging on to that one until we meet again. <laughs> Thank you. How about you, Domri? <laughs> hmm. I would have to say Being in a place of not, um, you know, accepting what it is, you know, not being judgmental and knowing that, you know, I, I can't control only what's in front of me and to, um, you know, not be upset by what people may or may not do. That is what I think they should do and just allow myself to be um, okay with whatever the situation is, just to be okay with it. Hello? I take Walt Disney's seeming belief that 
music and art and drama makes people happy. And maybe that's more of our goal in life than anything is to make ourselves and other people happy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Lorraine? What I'll take, what belief I'll take away from this conversation until we meet again, I think it's just the belief in yourself to make things beautiful. <laughs> you know, you put the vibes out there and you see something and you say, well, that's beautiful. <laughs> so that will be my belief, keeping things beautiful. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, what I take, the belief that I take away that, well, anything's possible and there's so much more going on than what I think <laughs> in any given moment. And it's never what I think it is. And so <laughs> I'm going to take away that belief. And I, I believe, you know, you know, stepping into Disney's shoes and inviting his vision and his mission and his message in, into our time today is, it's really such an anomaly to me. And, um, and, and it just seems like it, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. So, mm. so what will you take with you that'll support you for the rest of your life? Lorraine? Uh, what I'll take away uh, for the rest of my life is just how easy it is just to be, just to be. Mm. And uh, mm -hmm. look at things that, from a beautiful perspective. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. totally Olive um, I think I will take with me to support me for the rest of my life the um, appreciation of Disney's theories and philosophy just to to be young and young at heart and embrace embrace the beautiful and musical things in life mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anne Marie? What I will take away from this that will support me for the rest of my life is, you know, being grateful and just staying open and knowing that, you know, somebody out there is doing way worse than what I think that I'm doing. And so to be grateful for where I'm at and what I have and give thanks. Mm -hmm. Continue to give thanks. Mm -hmm. Alan? What I will um, take with me that will support me for the rest of my life, um, reminding, it's the reminder that all of these things, all these great words are uh, supportive and how supportive we are to each other. I think that's, that's the biggest. Having, having a support makes life so much easier and lighter. So mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, that's a really good thing for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of what I take away is there's something in in the in the base that we create together that and then the things that other people create that ultimately everything in its inception has a positive intent. Mm -hmm. It's usually what I do with it after that creates the <laughs> but I think ultimately it's the positive intent that's underneath everything. And I think that will continue to support me and this work in the highest and best way. So oh. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank for you very up. much. Thank you, thank you.